Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 25 Tips and Tricks video. Today we're going to be continuing our march through all of the crops available to us in Farm Sim 25 with a look at canola. Let's start it off by taking a look at the Farming Simulator Academy infographic related to canola, aka rapeseed. Canola is going to be able to be planted sometime between August and September, and it's going to be able to be harvested the following year in July or August. As such, it's going to have an 11 month old growing duration. We're going to require approximately 200 seeds per hectare. According to this infographic, we're going to be able to sell it for an average of $1,809 on easy mode. And we should see a yield of approximately 5,800 liters again per hectare. Now let's go and take a look at our prices screen and just compare some of this information. If we take a look at canola, well, we see we have an average price, high price on easy of $2,190 and an average low price on easy of $1,464. So if we meet right in the middle, we're gonna be right there around that $1,800, just like the infographic said. Take a look at our crop counter. We do indeed have our planting season in August and September. And then the following year, we're going to have our harvest in July and August. Again, just like the infographic said. Now, what can you do with canola once you get it out of the field? Well, you're going to be able to do a couple things with it. One, you can put it over here at our oil mill and process it into canola oil at which you can sell it at various sell points. You can feed your canola to pigs as part of their pig food requirement. You could store your canola in silos and then later sell it when the price is right. Let's take a look at build mode. And we're gonna come over here to silos and any of these silos would be able to hold canola. canola. We're just gonna put a couple of these down just to demonstrate them. And again, all of these are going to hold the same things. And then we're going to have a specific video on this Meridian bin or the Meridian bins and basically how they are going to work. But in general, your crop is going to come in here and be dumped at the dump station. It is going to be available to pull out of at the unload station and mostly silos. The dump and unload station is the same. Now, before we can harvest our canola, we have to put it in the ground. And in order to put it in the ground, we're going to be using the Lemkin Soltar 12. This is just a traditional seeder. And we're going to need some seed. And we can get our seed either in big bag pallet format, big bag format, or pallet format with little bags. Now, we do get 50 liters more if we get it in this particular format, as opposed to the two big bag formats which are only 1,000 liters a piece. And all three of these do cost the same. So if we come here to our vehicle shop and we come over here to Cedars, we're gonna find our category seeds. And here we're gonna be able to buy our seeds. Or we could go look at Cedars. And this is, any of these are gonna be able to put canola into the ground. Right there is the icon we are looking for. And again, for this video, we're gonna use the Lemkin Soltar 12 because at 12 meters, it's a pretty good working with. 180 horsepower requirement. It's a pretty darn good horsepower requirement, and it's a pretty darn good price there as well. Now, when we get around to harvesting our crop, we're gonna use a traditional grain harvester like this Clocks Lexion 6900. And we're also gonna be using a Macdon Flex Draper header. And then we're gonna run a test because canola can also be swathed. And to do that swathing, we're gonna use this Macdon swather with our D140XL header. After we have swathed our crop, we're gonna come back with this Macdon pickup header on our grain harvester in order to process that into grain. And then we're gonna be able to basically see, do we get any sort of yield bonus from using the swathing technique. In our grains video that we've already done, 
which focused on wheat, barley, and oats. We did see approximately a 25% yield bonus when using the MacDon Swather as opposed to the Gloss Traditional Harvester. If we once again take a look at our vehicle shop, we're going to come down here to Combine Harvesters. Any of these harvesters are going to be able to harvest your canola. And then we're going to click on Combinations. This is going to suggest to us the proper headers for this harvester based on the header size. We're going to be able to pick a header that's going to work with our canola and go with that. But if you want to pick some other header, well, you come here to Grain Headers, and any of these are going to be able to harvest canola. We're going to come to Corn Headers when it comes time to talk about corn and sunflowers. Now, as far as our field goes, we are here on Field 41 on Riverbend Springs. The reason we have selected this field is because, well, it is approximately one hectare in size and is nice and easy and rectangular. So here for the field 41, 1.18 hectares in size as far as our farmland goes. And you can see that we don't have a whole lot of extra farmland here. We have the bit out to the road a bit out to the fence, and then a bit out to the gravel road here in the gravel path here between 40 and 41. Now, as far as our production goes, I mentioned we can make canola oil at our oil mill. You see here we have our canola oil, and it is a two to one ratio. So we're gonna put 20 units of canola in, we're gonna get 10 units of canola oil out. Now, if we look at our prices, you know, see, again, we have an average high of $21.90 for canola, the grain. But if we look at our canola oil, we have an average high of $5,952. That is more than double the price of grain. So it does appear that we are going to have a benefit with respect to converting this into canola oil if we own the oil mill or we can find another reason to buy it because the oil mill... Well, it's pretty darn costly. We come here to factories. We come down here to our oil mill. $240,000 to buy the oil mill. Now, is the oil mill available as a mini production? I believe it is. Let's just see if we can find it here. There it is. $36,000 will give us the mini oil mill. That will give us a little better barrier for entry. But again, remember the production is going to be one tenth that of the standard oil mill. As with our other crop videos, Field 41 has already been prepared for seeding, which means that if it needed plowing, it has been plowed. It has also been cultivated, fully fertilized, and is ready to go. Let's go and load up our seeder with seed. Let's toggle Y to change our seed type from barley, oat, and now canola. Let's get our field seeded and then see what we get as far as actual seed usage compared to what the infographic said we should see. So we're going to come, we're going to address our field, lower our cedar down, turn it on, and off we go. And I'll be right back with you. So after seeding, you can see we have 500 or 953 liters. 953 liters. So we used 47 liters worth of seed. Pretty far cry from that 200 liters of seed that the infographic said we would be able to see. So it's pretty good that we are validating some of this information because the information from the infographic clearly was not very accurate with respect to overall seed usage. So there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and herbicide our ground here so we can get rid of our weeds. I'll fast forward into next month and we can take a look and see what our first stage growth looks like. 
We have our first growth state here in September. And now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and just advance time until we see our second growth state. Now, as we saw with wheat, when we went into winter, crop basically went into a dormant state. And we didn't really see a growth state for quite a long time. I suspect that will also be similar to what we see here with our canola. So let's just see how long it's going to take until we have something visually different to look at. So it took us all the way up to March to see our second growth on our canola field. So if you have seeded your canola and it doesn't look like it's growing at all, just remember it's likely dormant over winter. And once you do get to spring, once you do get to around the March time frame, you should see a second growth state. Well, it is absolutely pouring down here in May, but we have our third growth state. And at this point, this is the most beautiful crop that you see with respect to the third growth state. This beautiful yellow flowering canola really does look good across the countryside. And that's what our third growth state is going to look like. It's going to look like this basically from May and June. And then hopefully come July we'll be ready to harvest July is here we have absolutely perfect weather and our canola is ready to harvest now ready to harvest canola is really nothing to look at in fact it's all pokey and spiny and just just looks like a terrible thing to try to walk through so let's go and get out of that field what I'm gonna do I'm gonna hit save because again we are going to compare our output of our Kloss Harvester to the output of the Macdon Swather. So the way this is going to work is we are going to harvest the crop with this harvester. We're going to document how much we got off the field. And at that time, I am going to reload the save, which is exactly at this point. I am then going to hop into Macdon Swather. We're going to swath the crop. Then we're going to pick it up using our pickup header and then ultimately compare the two yields to see do we get more from our swather with respect to canola. We know we get a 25% bonus on wheat, barley, and oat because we've already done this test in the grains video. Now, something else I wanted to demonstrate is we cannot get straw from canola. So when we harvest our canola, it's gonna scatter the chaff in behind the harvester onto the ground. And as such, if we take a look here at our ground soil composition, you will see that we are getting a mulch state behind the harvester. So harvesting canola will give you a natural mulched state. You do not need to mulch your canola field after harvest because you're already going to have a mulched state on it. We go ahead and finish this harvest up. And we'll be back in a little bit. So after harvest, we have one th or no, one, 11,193 liters worth of canola off our approximately one hectare field. What does that come up to as far as a yield bonus over the 5,800 liters we were supposed to get according to the infographic? Well, that's a yield bonus of 92.9 liters. So pretty good little uptick with respect to our traditional harvest. Now again, we're going to boot up the save game and use our Macdon to swath. And uh, then we'll see what we get with our harvester once we 
harvest the swamp. Now we are going to swap off the top portion of the field here. This is just going to make turning the swather around a whole lot easier. And then let's take a look and see what our canola swath looks like. So we see we have our canola in here, our canola plant, and everything. So let me go ahead and finish up our canola harvest. And then I'll get right back with you once we start picking it up with our pickup header and our traditional harvester. So now we are collecting our canola swap with our pickup header and our grain harvester. Just like we were with our normal grain header, we are scattering the chaff behind us. And as such, we are going to be getting a mulched state behind the crop, as you can see there. And we're just going to kind of continue to go up and down and pick up these swaths of canola. And we'll see if we continue to have that 25% bonus on top of what we had with respect to our harvester yield, which itself was a 93% bonus above the expected yield from the infographic. So our yield was such where we actually filled our harvester up. I believe our harvester was around 82% with our initial test and with our swathing, we have filled it to full. We still have a little bit left to go. So let's just go ahead and finish this off. And then we'll come back and unload. And then see where we are. So if you remember, we had 11,193 liters with the traditional harvester. And now we have 13,980 liters via the swather. So let's run a couple calculations here. So 13,980 and 11,193. So that is 24.8 percent so basically 25 percent and 11980 sorry no 13980 by 5800 so 241 percent above what we would typically see with zero harvest or zero yield bonus and we've pretty much already established that it is best to go ahead and convert this into canola oil at a two for one. So we're only going to get half as much canola oil as canola. So since we have just under 14,000 liters of canola, we're going to be just a hair shy of seven pallets worth of canola oil. So I'm going to go ahead and activate this production. And let's move on into August. I had to go ahead and fast forward a little bit 
into August after we moved forward a month in order to get all of our six pallets that we would be expecting out of the production here. And if we come here to our prices screen, well, we will see again for our canola oil that we should expect an average high price of 5769 on easy. So if we take those six pallets times 5769 that's going to be a yield of $34,000 for our swath canola. Now, if we only had the traditional harvester and we then kind of swathed that or, or harvested that, that's only going to be five pallets. So then that would be five times 5769 or $28,845, ideally off of our one hectare field. Now, what I want to go ahead and do is sell these at all three farmers markets and just see what we get today. So we have our first pallet of 1,000 liters. $5,665. Pretty darn dear that highest price possible. Although it's not really what the prices were showing in the price menu. $5,509. And then finally, oops, this is why we always produce more than we need. $4,735. And all of these are showing higher than ultimately what we actually sold them for, which is kind of an interesting thing. So it's possible the 5769 really isn't gonna be the best price possible because these prices and what we actually got were a bit different. So overall, I'd say canola is not that impressive or not that fancy of a profitable crop. Now you might grow canola also, as I mentioned earlier, to feed your pigs because it would be a protein food source. So you could do that as well. Uh, but from a production standpoint, it's not a money maker like some other productions that we have already seen so far in our march through the various crops. So I'd love to know what you all think down in the comments below with respect to canola. What do you think of that long 11 month old 11 month growing season? It is a bit long. Uh, I've heard some folks say that really canola doesn't take that long to grow. So it's kind of odd that giants would have it to be nearly an entire year. And it does feel that for that year, I think you should probably get a little bit more profit locking that field up for an entire year on a single crop. Until next time, happy farming.